Okay, so in some of my videos, I was talking about how how to deal with really stressful situations, whatever the case, whether you're dealing with very difficult people, or maybe it's your health, or maybe it's finances, or maybe it's uh, relationships, uh, you know, your child going wayward, or, or, or something, you know, something that that is very stressful to you. Maybe you owe a lot of money and you don't know where you're going to get the money to pay. But Or maybe you're, you're dealing with a pet, the death of a pet, or the you can't afford to pay you know, a, a, the fee for your pet or your pet is sick or something. Whatever the reason, you know, everybody's going through some kind of stress, right? And the stress is so, it's, uh, it's, it's, I guess it's excessive to the point where you, you think you're going to go crazy. So what, I, what I'm trying to say is, you know, even though you might be going through that kind of a situation right now, remember that the Lord Jesus said in the Bible that no matter what you go through, he will never allow you to go through something that you cannot bear. I mean, well, yes, he will not allow you or me to go you know, through something that we cannot bear because he is living in us and he is the strength that will help us to overcome that. Okay, so whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, whether you're still going through it now, or maybe some of you guys have already um, been delivered from your stresses. Sorry guys, I'm squinting because the sun is, the there's a great big window over there, and the sun is, is shining in my face. And I don't want to wear sunglasses inside the house. Okay, so, yeah. So even if some of you guys have already been delivered from whatever you've been going through, you know, use your testimony to help other people to get through whatever they're going through right now. And the reason why I'm talking about this again is because I, um, I guess I, I wanted to, there's a big giant, um, what are those things called? Dragonfly. A big dragonfly, like, and their wings are like that. Anyway, I don't know if it was a dragonfly, but anyway, don't mind me guys, I tend to veer off in other topics when I'm talking to you guys about something, but you'll get used to it for you guys who don't know me yet. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so the reason why I was, uh, I was, I brought this topic up again, because I wanted to give you like a sort of an update, right? There it is again. So I wanted to give you like sort of an update. So in one of my, in some of my videos, I explained to you guys that I was going through a very severe form of psychological, well, not psychological, but it was a emotional and spiritual attacks from uh, a person that I know, right? And this person is very aggressive in, in their campaign to cause me as much harm as possible. But thank God, you know, thank God, you know, I have a very strong relationship with the Lord by choice because it is by choice that we have a relationship with the Lord that keeps us strong enough to endure things. So what I'm trying to say is, um, I'm still going through this really intense form of stress, right? And it, guys, it's really traumatic. It's traumatic, but it has not damaged me. Okay, so I, I want you guys to know, for you guys who are going through a severe form of uh, stress, whatever it is, okay? And stress affects us mentally. It, it affects us mentally. That's why a lot of us end up in the hospital crazy. And some of us, have heart attacks and some of us have high blood pressure, you know, anxiety attacks, panic attacks, people end up on antidepressants, you know, whenever somebody goes through a, a severe form of stress, they end up with medical, physical medical conditions and the Lord Jesus says, we do not have to get to that point. That's why he wants us to allow him to help us to overcome. And how do we do that? You just say, okay, for example, for you, whatever you are going through, you just say, Lord, I am at the point where I can no longer take this anymore. I feel like I'm going to go insane, like I'm going to go out of my mind, and like I'm going to have to be put in the hospital because I cannot take this anymore. Some people want to kill themselves. That's how stressed out they are. But the Lord Jesus says, you know, just trust in me. Just, just give me a chance. Give me a chance.
chance. And how do you do that? You say, Lord, you know, explain to him what you're going through and say, give me, uh, give me your strength. Well, he, he's already given it to us, but what, what we need to say is, Lord, teach me how to trust in your strength to help me to overcome. And how do you do that, guys? It's simple, but at the same time, for people who are going through an extreme form of stress, I've been going, I'm going through it, but it, it, it can still, whether you're going through a low form of stress or an extreme form of stress, it's, it's a decision to allow the Lord Jesus to help you come through it. You have to believe, you have to believe that he can help you come overcome it. For example, uh, a person is going through so much stress because they've lost everything. They've lost their husband or their wife. They've lost their home. They've lost all their money. The, the spouse has taken away their children. They, they don't have anything that belongs to them anymore. Nothing, not, nothing no furniture, no, no car, no bicycle, nothing. Everything has been taken away, right? That right there would cause some people to want to kill themselves. So if they go to a place where they want to try and kill themselves, like they go to an area where they throw themselves and they want to die, okay? That's the, form, that's the extreme kind of stress I'm talking about, right? That person, even in that situation, does not have to uh, kill themselves. They don't have to say, okay, well, I have lost everything. I have lost everything, so now I have a reason to kill myself. I, I cannot take this anymore. The pain is too much to bear. But if you just trust, if that person just trusts in the Lord, if you're in that situation, if you just trust in the Lord Jesus, say, Lord, this is my situation. He knows it already, by the way. But he wants you to communicate. Say, Lord, this is my situation. I cannot bear it. I want to die. But I'm going to trust in you to help me to overcome this mental distress, this mental agony because I cannot do it on my own. And then see if the Lord will not deliver you, because He does deliver. Some people don't believe. Some people say, oh, when you ask the Lord Jesus, that's just talk. You're just talking. Those are, those are just words. What are words going to do? Guys, the Lord Jesus Christ is real. The reason why you are alive is because He is real. He created you. And if He said in His Word that He will not allow you to go through more than what you can bear, then you have to trust in Him, no matter what you're going through. He's, he told us in the Bible, He says, in this world, we will have, um, I think He said trials, trouble, tribulation, we will, we will have very extreme form of trouble. But He says, but, but don't worry, take heart, I overcame the world. And, be, and because He overcame the world, that means, we can overcome because he's living in you and he's living in me. Right? And if the Lord Jesus is living in you, that means you have his strength to overcome. It's just a matter of believing it. What do you believe? If you don't believe you can overcome it, then you won't. Because the Bible, in the Bible, the Lord Jesus says, as a man thinks, so is he. So if you, if you believe, if you think you cannot overcome, then unfortunately you will not. That's why a lot of people end up killing themselves because they do not believe what the Lord Jesus says in the Bible about his power to help you to overcome and to be completely delivered from mental stress, anguish, anxiety, and depression. He can deliver you guys. Um, guys, he can deliver us from everything. He raises the dead. In the Bible, he commands us. He says, heal the sick. Raise the dead. If we can do those things, then don't you think that the Lord Jesus can also, uh, who is living in you, can deliver you from whatever you're going through? The first thing is, you, you have to get you have to uh, get yourself to make a decision. Say, okay, this is what I'm going through. But since the Lord said this, then I'm just going to choose to believe, and I'm going to give Him a chance to to prove that He can deliver me. Okay, just say, Lord Jesus, I can't take this anymore. Lift the anxiety that I'm going through. Lift it and then provide a way for me out of this situation. Because in the Bible, he does say, if you, you know, if you, if you, find, if you find yourself dealing with, this, with a situation,
situation that you cannot handle, then he will provide a solution, a, a way out of it. He says that. Well, he, it's all in the Bible, guys. Your, your job is to trust in him because he didn't die on the cross just for nothing, just because he wanted to. He didn't do it just, oh, I'm just going to die on the cross, and if people don't want to accept my power to deliver them, then that's okay too. He didn't do that. He would have died in vain if he did that. What he wants you to do is to trust in him because he died to deliver us from, from the works of the devil who comes to kill and destroy. Right? A lot of people think that we are under... Um, see, a lot of people think that because the Lord Jesus gave us grace, right? We, he gave us grace, meaning we're no longer under the law, which means the Lord God does not see our sins because the Lord Jesus removed that. Okay? When the Lord Jesus sees you, and when the Lord God looks at you, when the Holy Spirit looks at you, they see Jesus. They see the work that he did. They, they, don't, they don't blame you for anything anymore because the Lord Jesus destroyed your sins, my sins, on the cross. So when he looks at us, he doesn't see our sins. He doesn't see what we did a year ago or 20 years from now. He doesn't see that because the Lord Jesus, uh, he, he, he delivered us from that. But it doesn't mean that that kind of grace is an excuse to sin. Because in the Bible, the Lord also says there is no forgiveness for willful sin. I don't remember which verse that it says that in there. But there is no forgiveness for willful sin. A lot of people are under the impression that, well, since the Lord Jesus died for me, he, co you know, he, covered, he, he, he didn't cover our sins, he removed them. That's why we are blameless before his sight today. Right? A lot of people believe that because the Lord Jesus removed our sins, he forgave us, that we have that that grace is an excuse to carry on to, to live sinfully no the in the bible the lord jesus says there is no forgiveness for willful sin because there is no more sacrifice for willful sin that's what he says so for anybody who thinks that okay i can i gave okay, for example you you give yourself to the lord jesus christ and then you say okay, then, then all of a sudden you're like okay well the lord forgave me of my sins all right now i can he forgave me now i can just go out and continue living on the way I was before I got saved. No. The Lord says He makes all things new. He says, come out from them. Come out from them means remove yourself from what? From the world, the worldly ways that you used to live in. He wants you to be removed from that because you cannot, He cannot use you. He cannot live in, in somebody if, if we are still living you know, in the world ways. He can't he cannot occupy a filthy temple. Okay? So that's what he says, come out from them, be separated from them, and be one come become one with him. Because he's a holy God. And he says that nothing that is unholy will get into heaven. Okay, it's that serious guys. So when you become born again, it means you have to stop living your life the way you were living. Okay? Have right way of thinking. No more willful sin because I'm under grace. No. There's another thing that people believe that, you see, so when it comes to stress, some people believe, I mean, they, they're believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe Him. They, they, they know that the Lord Jesus is the Son of God. But because they're going through so much mental trauma, so much emotional trauma, whether it's bipolar or whatever, biological mental illness or just psychological illness, guys, it's all real. Some people like, are afraid that they might kill themselves. They don't want to die. They don't want to die. They want to live for the Lord Jesus, but there's, they, 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 they become so stressed out that they're like, okay, I, I want to die. And, and the Lord Jesus will understand. He will understand because I'm under grace. He, for, he would forgive me of my sin of killing myself, and I'll go straight to heaven. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay? If we kill ourselves, guys, that is destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people believe that because you're, you're not killing somebody else. They understand that killing somebody else is a sin that will send you to hell. But they don't believe that if they kill themselves, because they're, they're committing the act on themselves, suicide, that it's a, it, a forgivable. It's not, it's not a sin at all. They don't even believe it's a sin. You, you kill yourself, okay? In the Bible, God says, before the creation or 
did he say before the foundation of the world? I think he said, I knew you. Okay, that means that you were in heaven. By the way, we were all in heaven before he, the Lord God placed us in our mother's bellies. He, 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 he created us with a purpose. Everybody is, is connected to other people's um, blessings. And if we remove ourselves from the earth, those people will not be blessed. Okay? So there, there's no sin, guys. There's no, there's no uh, I, I meant to say, there's no forgiveness. There's no forgiveness for suicide because you are removing yourself. You are taking away a life that the Lord Jesus died for. He said, remember, in this world you shall have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Come to me for healing. I will deliver you from these things. If you kill yourself, then that, that's pride, because you're saying that the Lord Jesus is not, is not strong enough to deliver you, to deliver me from suicide, from my mental distress, from my physical distress, from, from whatever situation I'm going through. If we kill ourselves, because we because of our problems then we are telling the lord god father the sacrifice that you, you did for us through your son the lord jesus christ was not enough for me it was not enough to deliver me from my problems so i have to kill myself but i know that you'll you, you know you'll still let me into heaven wrong thinking not going to happen there are people in hell right now for killing themselves because of this kind of prideful arrogant thing a way of thinking. They think that God is a God of grace. He overlooks everything. He doesn't look. Over, he does not look over everything. He does not overlook everything. In the Bible, wh where is that verse with the Lord Jesus? He healed somebody. He, I think it was a, a blind man. Somebody he healed somebody. He healed somebody of something. And right after the Lord Jesus healed him, the Lord Jesus says, "Now stop sinning before something bad happens to you." Okay, so when we deliver, when, when the Lord Jesus delivers us from this world, when he delivers us from uh, uh, something that was oppressing us, physically or mentally, he expects us to now continue to um, live for him. Okay, he, 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 can, he expects us to live for him because he is a holy God and he's not going to occupy a filthy, unholy temple. It's impossible for him to do that. He won't do it. He's a holy God. And he's, he's very, he, he's right in everything that he says, guys. That's what he tells us. I mean, he's right not, be, not because I say it. He's right because he's God. Right? So, yeah, for, so for you guys, you know, whatever the situation that you're going through, you want to die. Unfortunately, there is no room in heaven. There is no room in heaven for people who willfully remove a life that the Lord Jesus willfully created for His purposes, for His for, for, for His kingdom here on earth. And there are also other things that He plans He has planned for us in heaven. It never, the work doesn't finish. Whatever we have up, He has things for us to do up in heaven. So you know, for for, for people who think, oh, God is a lovely God, He is full of grace. All he ever does is just, all he's ever shown me is just grace. That's all he's ever shown us, guys. That's all he's ever shown us ever since the Lord Jesus died for us. We're no longer under the law. He looks at us, when he sees us, he sees Jesus. But, as he says in the Bible, there is no forgiveness for willful sin. One time I ran on Facebook, somebody asked a question about three or four years ago. I don't remember what the, the question was, but it was about... Somebody asked the question, is it okay for us, is it okay for us to do something, something, even though we now believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, it's a sin, but, but is, okay, is it okay for me to continue doing this? And then somebody else, I didn't know these two people. These were, these, these were people that were most likely connected to somebody else that I knew. And then somebody else answered the question, and, and you know what he said? He said, oh yeah, continue on sinning. You're free to sin. You're under, you're under grace. The Lord Jesus Christ, the blood covered it all. You're free to sin, and you'll still go to heaven. So then I, I said, no, 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 no. This, you know what? I'm going to have to give some verses to disprove that. So that's what I did. I gave some verses. I wrote in, you know, I, I posted, and, and then, and I, you know, of course you're going to be, you have to be, um, don't think that I was rude or anything, because I'm not like that. I'm just, when I speak, I, I, I you know, I, I say, hey, guys, you know, that's actually not accurate. Here are some verses that 
teach uh, contrary to contrary to what you're saying. So I gave him the verses and I explained to them, you know, this is the situation. There is no forgiveness for willful sin, and anybody who teaches others to willfully sin will end up in hell, right? So then, and neither both of them said responded back to me. In most cases, people, I mean, we cannot refute what the Bible says. If the Bible says you can't do this, or otherwise you're going to be punished, right? I'm not going to say, oh, okay, well, the Lord was right. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say, oh, well, actually, I don't agree with what the Lord says. What I believe is actually true. No, I'm going to say, oh, so the Lord says we can't do that because it leads to, to you know, to damnation. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. That's how I think, guys. I believe whatever the Lord Jesus says in the Bible. And so these two people, whether they believed in what the, the verses said or not, I don't know. Maybe they, they believed it, and maybe that's why they didn't say anything. Or maybe they just didn't want to get into an argument. But I don't get into arguments, guys. I just, I will give you verses, and if you want to believe it, you know, okay. But sometimes I'll get into it a little bit more, and, you know, give you like tons and tons and tons of verses. But by the end of like all the tons of verses, and the person still doesn't believe, I said, well, you know what, that's between you and God. I'm not making up these verses. I'm providing you with verses that the Lord Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit say, this is the way it is, and if you're not going to follow it, these are the consequences. Right? So I just, I just at that point, guys, I just, I just say, okay, you, you know, you believe what you want to believe, and, you know, just, it's between you and God. Okay? So, yeah, just, guys, you know, so getting back to what I was saying about my, myself in the beginning, I'm still going through a tremendous level of stress. stress. And before the year was over, uh, 2000, before 2017 came, around September of last year, I think it was, I, I started to see a change in the attitude of the person who was always attacking me for no reason. And I'm like, oh, you know, wow, this is really great. But, you know, think it, it looks like the person kind of because there are moments when you, you know, you, I will see the person kind of backing off, and then, then they'll come at me like, just, you know, really, really aggressive, right? But at no time, at no time is the person not doing something to cause me a tremendous amount of uh, stress. But at the same time, it has not damaged me, because I will not allow it, because I believe in what the Lord Jesus says. He will not allow me to go through anything that I cannot bear. You know what I'm saying? My relationship with the Lord Jesus is, is like, I don't know how to explain it, guys. I, I can literally feel him in my presence. Because when you cultivate a relationship with the Lord every single day, every day, all day long, okay, the presence of God, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit become more, more apparent. You can feel their presence more. You can, um, you can just feel their presence a lot more. And guys, you know what? Through a word from somebody that I received from, from a ministry, I didn't know this about myself. Okay, but some, somebody told me, um, like, you mean, I mean, I mean, this is, a, these are prophets, like, these are prophets, right? And they, they tell you things that only God knows. You know, they, they tell you things that only God, you and God know. So I know that what this person told me is very accurate. So, but one thing that he told me that I didn't know about myself, which confirmed why, confirmed some things. Now I understand why he said what he said. He said that God, God told me that I am what I'm what you call a seer, and I didn't understand what that was. I have heard of the term before, but I did not understand what is a seer. So then I started doing some some research, and, and the Lord God told me I want you to watch a video from Jonathan Welton. He's a seer, and he has, and he has a, a school of, of seers, and so, yeah, I was just, anyway, I was watching some of his videos, it's very interesting, you know, what, what's, what, um, what the role of a seer is, and, and why they're called seers, and now I understand, because, I guess seers, like seers, you know, they see things, right, you see things in, in, this, in the invisible, and you see things every day, all day, it's like breathing, it's normal, you just see things all day, okay, and, so what I wanna what I what I'm getting at is whatever your gift, it becomes stronger. Like, okay, okay, I'm a seer, right? So whatever your the, the gifts that the Lord gives the seers, 
um, become stronger when you when the more you develop your relationship with the Lord. So I, I have developed in my abilities and I have seen a lot more things. The Lord's been telling me things why I see that and why what is it what does it mean? Um, and, I'm developing, he's helping me to grow in, in many areas of what seers do, right? So whatever your gift, when the more you cultivate your relationship with the Lord Jesus, then the stronger your abilities in those gifts will be, whatever they are, you know? So just ask the Lord Jesus, Lord, what is my purpose here on earth? And please help me to develop those gifts even more. And when the way to do that is like what I just said. Cultivate a relationship with the Lord every day. This is what I do. And I've mentioned this in other videos many times. You know, I wake up really early in the morning. And I just, you know, I'll just talk to the Lord. My morning prayers. Okay? And then after that, I'll go about my day because I, I run a business. I'll go about my day. And then the Lord will tell me it's time to pray. Or it's time to sing. It's time to sing and dance for me. Or it's time to read your Bible. So... I will hear him say these things and then I will go to my room and I'll start uh, praising him or singing or reading my Bible or something like that. Or sometimes he'll tell me, Nancy, I would like for you to go and uh, speak to so-and-so and tell them these things, right? And what I was doing was prophesying over them because whatever the Lord tells me to tell somebody, that's, that's prophesying. And I didn't know that's what I was doing. I, all I knew was the Lord tells me to do something and then I go and do it, right? So then... Because in the Bible, the Lord Jesus says that he uses, um, he uses prophets to, to edify the church and for comforting and for encouragement and for hope, right? And so, but I didn't realize that that's what, I, I knew that the word were comforting people, but I didn't know that that's what I was doing was prophesying. So a lot of things, guys, that I didn't know that I was doing, the Lord um, has been developing and I, he has been telling me, okay, this is what you're doing. You are prophesying. So the more you cultivate your life with, with the Lord Jesus, the more you learn about yourself, the more the Lord God reveals things about you. Because there are things about us, guys, we don't know anything about ourselves. We don't know anything about us. That's why our identity is found in the Lord Jesus. When we, when we develop a relationship with Him, we, we, uh, we learn more about ourselves as we go along. And the learning process about ourselves never stops. That's forever. That goes on forever until we go up there. Okay, so, yeah, anyway, back to me. I mean, I mean I'm talking about the, the stress that I was going through and I'm still going through. You know, it's, guys, it's enough to want to, really want to kill yourself. I don't want to kill myself. I, I don't want that, but I'm saying that the, it's an extreme for, form of, of psychological, emotional, and spiritual abuse, guys. It's, it's wretched, it's vicious, it's just, it's something, it's very demonic. That's why it's so aggressive. It's very demonic. But I'm not afraid of the demons in that person, and I'm not afraid of that person. If we are fearful, then those things will overtake us, and we will end up in the hospital crazy. You know? A, a, look. A person that is depressed can think themselves out of depression through what they think. As a man thinks, so is he. The Lord Jesus says, whatever you say about yourself is exactly what will happen. So if you want to be delivered from bipolar, okay, from, from medical, uh, biological, mental conditions that where you're seeing demons and you're, you're seeing ugly things and you're hearing voices telling you, go kill yourself, go kill your mother. Go, go, go throw yourself over the balcony. Guys, those are demonic things. Those are demonic things. You have to read your Bible because your Bible um, fills you with the Holy Spirit's power. That you are, every time you read the, the, the Bible, you are filling yourself with the Holy Spirit's power. I know, guys, I know what I'm talking about because this is what, I, what I have experienced. Okay, one time I was reading my Bible and suddenly I saw through the Lord, like I, I, I saw through my wall, my ceiling, and the, the Holy Spirit started throwing down plates of armor, all kinds of different, 
different plates of armors and they were they were okay, sorry guys my camera stopped recording it stops recording after every 30 minutes that's just how it was made so in the bible the lord the holy spirit says um sorry i thought i heard the door his word he says arm yourself with my word right it's a, it's literal it's armor so all the, these pieces of armor were coming they were coming they were tumbling down like they were doing this tumbling down in a very fast like that and attaching here, attaching here, my neck, like a, you know, a helmet, my face, um, my torso, everything, every part of my body was being covered by armor, which were pieces, the, the word, the, the Lord's word. Oh, hold on, guys. Did I? Hold on. Okay. It just looked like. Wait, camera stopped recording. I thought I, I heard it stop recording, but it says recording. So yeah, so guys, don't let your your psychological stresses, whether they're biological and you have to take medication, or it's brought on by circumstances, situations, people or situations, whatever, start to cultivate a relationship with the Lord Jesus and be, be um, consistent. And the more consistent you are, the more you get used to it it will become very normal like like just a regular routine it becomes very normal at, guys at this point in my life i cannot imagine myself getting up every day and not doing the things that i told you that i was doing i can't and I, i'll go crazy i'll go crazy if i don't talk to god if i don't sing and pra praise him if i don't talk to him because i'm talking to him guys throughout the, the day like as like you know when you you're you're, you're with you're, you're with a friend and you're talking to them you're having a conversation that's how I am with God, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I talk to them throughout my day. Like, like I'll just be in the kitchen and I'll just be chatting with God about something. I'll be, you know, um, looking for something in the living room and I'll just be, say, talking to God about something and saying, say, Lord, you know what? Do you, you know uh, when we were watching that show yesterday, you remember that person who said this and whatever, whatever, you know, you know, I'll be discussing something like that. Have a regular conversation a regular regular chatting with God this is what he wants this is what he wants just because you may not be able to see him he's invisible doesn't mean that he's not there because he's there you know like there are many times when you know like some people can see God okay and in, in like okay what I'm trying to say is Anybody can see, any, anybody can learn to see in the spirit. You don't have to be a seer or a prophet or, or, or an apostle or, or whatever. You know, you don't have to be one of those titles or a pastor to see in the spirit. Anybody can learn to see in the spirit. And if you would like to learn to see in the spirit, cultivate a relationship with the Lord and say, Lord, I would like to see things in the spirit. But it's not just because you want to see these things because you want to be fascinated. There's a reason for why the Lord Jesus allows us to see things in the spirit. It's because we are able to identify what person is being oppressed, what person belongs to the Lord. You can warn a person about something. The Lord Jesus may show you something about somebody and then he'll tell you, okay, you know what? You see what you're seeing? That person is dealing with such and such, such, and such a thing in their life and unless they get rid of it, they're going to die. I would like for you, and then the, then the Lord might say, I would like for you, and then you, I would like for you to do whatever instructions he will give you, and then you go and follow those instructions based on what he is showing you. This is why. This is the reason for the ability to see in the spirit. Everybody, guys, we are, we are supernatural beings, but the way we are taught in this world is that we are natural. That's why a lot of us do not see in the spirit. And it's very natural for people to be able to see the spirit because we were made in the image of a supernatural God. His DNA is in us. And we, because we don't believe that we can see the spirit, we suppress the abilities that he has given us. That's why, okay, it's not just prophets and seers and, 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 and pastors and people, whatever, you know, title, whatever that have the ability to see in the spirit. Some people, you know, see things in the spirit and they don't understand why. That was that was me. I did not understand. Uh, like, what I'm trying to say is, it, it was not something shocking. 
It was not something shocking. I wasn't asking, why am I seeing these things? For me, it was always normal. That's for me, it was just natural for me to see these things. But with the more I cultivated my relationship with the Lord, then I started asking Lord Jesus, now I'm seeing a lot more. So what does this mean? What is this? What is the significance of what I'm looking at? What what is it? What do I do with it? So then he starts to and he started to answer my questions. Daughter, this is why you're seeing this. And the more I the deeper I, I get in relationship with the Lord, the more he shows me. And and every time he shows me something, he gives me the reason why why am I seeing that? What is the purpose? What does it mean? Right? So I was never shocked that I was seeing these things, but, I, but at the same time I was wondering, Lord, what does that mean? What does that mean? I have no idea. I've seen many things that, that don't make any sense. So I have to keep asking the Lord, what does that mean? Okay, so, yes guys, so please, I am going through a tremendous amount of stress, but, you know, it does, I'm still happy. I'm still very, very happy, right? The Lord Jesus says to rejoice in your situations. He doesn't say to rejoice because of your situation. He doesn't. He didn't create you to rejoice over your hardships. He says that. He said that he came to give us life and to give it more abundantly. He wants to see you happy, but he does expect us to praise him through our storms. Because when we praise him through our storms, his strength becomes bigger in us. We, are, we allow this strength to become bigger in us. Right? We, we, we don't suppress the strength that he has in us. We allow his strength to overcome us. Therefore, we're allowed to, and not allowed, but we're able to go through whatever we're going, whatever hell we're going through, we're able to go through whatever hell we're going through with unfazed, unburned, guys, because that is my situation right now. Even though I have been going through the most hellish of things. Guys, I am, I mean, you guys see me. I am, I'm perfectly fine and normal, and I'm very happy. Of course, I don't like what I'm going through, and I would like to be taken out of it immediately. But there is a time for when, you know, I will be delivered from all that. You know, I asked, I asked the Lord three years ago, almost Four years ago, I said, Lord, can can I please uh, excommunicate myself from that person? <laughs> Sorry, guys. And he said, no, not yet. I have work to do uh, in that person through you. So you must stay where you are. I have work to do uh, through you for the sake of that person's soul. So that's why I, that's the reason why I have I have not excommunicated this person from myself. Because it has to do with their soul, guys. And I have to obey. And even up until this point, there have been times when I'm just, I'm just really fed up and I said, Lord, I don't care about their soul anymore because that's how upset I was. I don't care about their soul anymore. I don't care whether they end up in hell or not. But really, I do care. I don't want them to end up in hell. Those are just words of a very frustrated, um, frustrated person. But you get over that because I don't want them to go to hell. I don't want them in hell. You know, forgiveness for me is always there. Um, I literally exist in the form of forgiveness because that's the heart that the Holy Spirit gave me. The old heart was ripped out and he created a new one. Now I do not understand what it is not to forgive. I don't understand that. I do not, I, I don't like unforgiveness. I love forgiving. For me, it tastes good, it feels good, it's delicious. Forgiveness and the Lord Jesus Christ are the best things that ever happened to me. For me, forgiveness, guys, I, I can't live without it. It's like, it's like, it's like, if you're in the hospital and you have uh, something in you, you know, hooked up to you, uh, that's keeping you alive. If they remove that from that from you, you will die. So in the same thing, in the same way, for me, if I stop forgiving, I will die. And the thing is, I don't know how to stop forgiving because, and the thing is that it's not a work that I did. The Holy Spirit did that in me because before I had this new heart, I was not willing to forgive. I wanted to hold on to unforgiveness. And the thing is, I was not always like that. I was always a very forgiving person my entire life from the time I was born. But then, some years later, 
I allowed unforgiveness to enter into me, and then I became bitter. And then one day, I asked the Lord um, to please show me if I was living my life right. And to summarize everything, you know, He showed me that I was not living right. And then through a, uh, something that happened throughout the night uh, in my heart, like, and I felt the, the Holy Spirit grab my heart, and He started needing it like this, and it was a, a horribly painful thing. But in the, it, it lasted the entire night, and in the morning, I was brand new, and I, I felt as if oh, the ugly heart was taken out, and whatever the Lord was doing, He made a new one. So the old Nancy is gone, and He put a new one. The Lord Jesus, I just heard Him say, I make all things new. I do not understand who I was. I don't know that person. If I was to come across them on the street, I would not recognize that Nancy. I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know her. I'd say, that was me? I can't believe how ugly I was. And then I would ask the Lord Jesus Christ permission to beat myself up. Because I don't like that Nancy. I like who I am now. I love who I am now. Because the Holy Spirit's work made me who I am today. I love forgiving guys. It's, it's, I love it. It's delicious. I'm getting goosebumps everywhere. I love it. Okay? And if you want that kind of a heart, you ask the Holy Spirit. You say, Lord, give me a radical heart of forgiveness. And He will do it. Because... Not everybody is able to, to have that kind of change of heart. Some people are born that way, but others needed help, right? I was, I was born a, a forgiving person, but then I allowed unforgiveness to enter into my heart, and I didn't want to give it up. That, those kind of people need help. <laughs> like, it was, that was me. So that's why I give the credit and the glory to my, my Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God, because because the Holy Spirit was the one who gave me this new heart. And I still am completely amazed that I'm walking around with a heart that is in a state of forgiveness long before any offenses take place. That's where I am. You know, there, there, I was talking to somebody uh, about three months ago. My mother and I encountered somebody, right? And she, we were having a conversation with this person. And then suddenly the person assumed, the, suddenly the person just became all, they, they, they got all loud and started yelling and started, but they were yelling at my mother and they were saying, you're yelling, you're, you're, you're making fun of me, you're making fun of me. And I was looking at this person like, okay, you're yelling at my mother, you're being very disrespectful to her, like you're yelling at somebody's mother, you know, like what's the matter with you? That's what I was thinking in my mind, but at the same time I had, a lot of mercy in him, and the forgiveness was already there. I didn't like what he was doing, because who likes people to offend their mother? You know, I didn't like what he was doing. I was, I was appalled. I said, I can't believe this person is standing there in front of me going crazy on my mother. I said, don't you have any respect for people's mothers? If I wasn't there, not that it would still be okay, but the, the thing is, if, I, if, if, the, if, the person's, if the person that you're yelling at, if the person that they were yelling at their child wasn't there, they would, it's kind of different, you know, but the, the child of the person that you were yelling at is there, and you're not considering that maybe this child is being offended over you yelling at their mother, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no respect there for, for, for an, a, a parent figure, so that, I was very shocked. So anyway, I, I diffused the situation because after the, the, the person calmed down, I said, you know what? Sometimes we misinterpret other people's words and, and our, uh, our body language as, as uh, something harmful and offensive to us. But the only way that you can learn to, to, to see or understand that that person probably didn't mean any harm was by getting to know them. I said, give them a chance and then you will see that whether they were, they really, what they, what they said to you was really harmful or not. You, you need to give people a chance. So then the person, suddenly their attitude just changed. They're like, oh yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah, that's true. So that was, this, but, but if, I was, if I was the old Nancy, I, I probably would have been very rude to that person and said, what's the matter with you? What, what are you doing going crazy on my mother? How dare you do that to my mother? That's my mother. What's wrong with you? Like, you know, I would have gone really, I would have become very upset, right? But because 
because of the work of the Holy Spirit, I was able to control myself. I had no desire to go crazy on the guy. I was very upset, but I had no desire to get all um, awful in his face. No, I just, the first thing that always comes to my mind is the way the Lord Jesus would handle that situation, right? The Lord Jesus says in the Bible, when you, when you speak with kind words, then you diffuse the situation, right? And even in cases where if you speak with kind words, the person is still going crazy, you did your job, you walk away. Because we cannot control other people's behaviors, nor are we responsible for the way they react to how we are trying to uh, calm down the situation. Okay, you, you've done your job. The Lord will reward you for it. He will protect you for it. He will, he will hold your, your, your reputation and your name intact, and He will protect your name and your reputation because of the way you are handling yourself. All right, so that's, that's, that was just, uh, what I just said was just an example of how the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit worked in my heart to, to, to make me, uh, to literally walk around in the form of forgiveness. Remember, we have the Lord Jesus' DNA. Therefore, if we allow Him to do the work in us, we too can, can manifest, or we too can allow His DNA to operate through us. His attributes, guys, His attributes. His, 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 uh, the Lord Jesus only exists in the form of forgiveness. That's why we are able to live like that, exist in that way. Okay, guys, um, so, you know, getting back to your stresses, make sure that, you know, like I, like I gave instructions or, you know, suggested earlier, read your Bible, talk to the Lord throughout the day, sing and praise Him, guys. That is vital. It is vital. It is vital that you sing and dance for the Lord. Do you know what happens when you sing and dance for God? And the Bible says that His presence comes. He, he, he inhabits the praises of His people. He, he comes like He's already living in us, but He, he makes Himself even more known. He's, his presence becomes stronger. And also His angels come right away. His angels come right away, guys. This is what I, this is what I see all the time. Whenever I'm singing and praising the Lord, they will come and surround me. Sometimes they will be like, you know, standing like in a line this way and over there. And whichever way I move, they move. They move as if though they already know what moves I'm going to make. It, it, it's as, it's, it is as though our minds are connected and they already know which way I'm going to move and they move with me. They, they don't move like... What I'm trying to say, I think you understand what I'm saying. If I do this already, they, they're doing this at the very same time. I mean, no, like if, if I do this, an angel doesn't like go after me. No, they move with me at the same time. It's as though they already know exactly what I'm going to, how I'm going to move. And some of them are funny. Like the very first time, the very first time I started seeing angels dancing with me was four years ago. And I said, wow, Father, that's really neat. So, like, there I was, you know, dancing for the Lord, and I see these angels around dancing. And then I said, I noticed, Father God, I said, I said, Father, I noticed that these angels are moving in unison with me. Let me see if they will do what I do next. So then, you know, I'm, like, dancing and dancing, and then uh, I just started, you know, rolling up my sleeve. Like, I said, I just started rolling up my sleeve, and then I saw one angel start rolling up his sleeve. <laughs> and I said, that's so funny. So, you know, they... They like to play around with you like that, but they love, they really love singing and dancing with you. And recently I've been hearing trumpets and um, instruments, um, cymbals, okay, I've been hearing cymbals and, and trumpets, as a, you know, trumpets, really high pitched, very loud. And I've just been hearing choirs of angels. So, a little bit, about a month ago, a little about a month ago, a little over a month ago, I've been asking God, Lord, I would like to start hearing trumpets, but what, what I was talking about was trumpets like, like, you know, there are videos of people posting on video that they've actually, they've been hearing real sounds of trumpets outside. I'm pointing this way because outside is that way, the window's over there. 
and I didn't want you to hear that because I would like to video, you know, videotape me and, and uh, for, I want to videotape it so that I can show you guys. But I have not heard that yet. What I have been hearing when I've been singing and dancing for the Lord are the sounds of trumpets. And these, these, the instruments that I'm hearing are not in the songs that I'm listening, that I'm listening to. They're not in there. And the, the instruments that the Lord is allowing me to hear, they're, they're so much louder than the music that I'm listening to from the, the, the computer. And it's very, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. And the, the music that I'm listening are the angels, they're up there and they're, they're playing instruments and they're praising God as I'm singing and dancing. Because remember guys, when you sing and dance, the angels come. They come, they can't help themselves. They want to be wherever people are praising God. They love God so much. That's what they live for. They only live to praise God. That's, that's, they love that. They love it, guys. They, they really honor and adore God. That God is their heart. He is their life. They live for Him. They exist for Him. They love Him. Right. So wherever people are talking about Him, wherever people are praising Him, they come. Some, this, this happened to me, I think last week I was sitting, I was in my room, and, I, and it was time for me to read, so I, I grabbed my Bible and I was, you know, sitting there just reading, and all of a sudden I saw these angels just come really fast. I was sitting on my bed, at the, uh, at the one, one in the center of my bed, like on, the, you know, my feet were on the floor, and then suddenly I just saw these angels come really fast, and they sat in front of me, like children sit in front of a teacher with their legs crossed, and they were looking up at me like, well, not like this, but they were like, They were, it's, it's like they were fascinated because of what I was reading. It's as though, it's, it's as if though I was a teacher and, and I was just reading to them something from a school book that was fascinating them. And this is very interesting because this was, when did this happen? About a week? About a week, a week, a week ago. Okay, it's about a week ago. And maybe a week and a half ago. Yeah, it was about a week and a half ago. And then sometime after that, I was watching a video where one of the Lancaster prophets... Sorry, I thought I heard the door opening. One of the Lancaster prophets, I think his name is... Ne I think the person I was listening to, was his name is Neville Johnson. I think it was him, but anyway, one of them was saying that angels like to come and listen to what you have to say because they don't need the Bible because the Bible was made for us. So they like to come and listen, hear what you have to say about what, what I mean, what you read. They like to, they like, it. they like to hear the word of God. They like it. That's why I'm like, oh, is that? So then I put two and two together. This was like almost two weeks ago when I saw these angels come to my room and I was sitting. I mean, I was reading my Bible. And in my in my mind, I'm like, why are they here? Don't they know what's in the Bible? They're looking at me as so in, with intent. With uh, they really love what I'm saying, and they're hungry for more for what I was reading. And but I was saying, Father, I don't understand. What are they doing here? Like this? I've never seen this before. What does this mean? Why are they here? I thought they knew what was in the Bible. Surely they know what's in the Bible. So then, why are they sitting before me, fascinated with what I'm reading? And then it was, like I said, it was a few days after when I saw that video, when God answered my question, because he does that, he's always, whenever I ask him a question, he tells me to watch a certain video, it answers my question. So then I was watching that one prophet, and he said that angels like to come and listen to the word of God. That's why they're in church. They like to, when you go to church, and, they're, and, and it's a church that's on fire for God, and they're doing things the right way, they're there. They sit down and they listen. Some of them are standing around. I've seen that. I've seen angels, I've seen angels in churches, in this one church that I used to go to, when there's a lot of praise, they, they're there. They, they, they like to be there. Okay? But I've, I've never seen them come and sit there and listen to a service. I've never seen that. But I have, but I have seen them come and worship God while people worship God. But I, but I know that angels do go to churches and listen to what the word is saying. You know, this is what God has shown me. So I was very, I was fascinated that angels wanted to come and hear what I was reading. Because like I said, I thought they already knew what was in the Bible.
Bible. But the, the prophets said they don't know what's in the Bible. They, that's why they like to, they, because they don't need it. They don't read it because the Bible was not, it's not it was not an instru a book of instruction created for angels. It was for us. We need that. Angels are in there, up in, up in heaven, following God, you know, instructions. Go do this, go do that. That's what they do. They don't need the Bible. They don't read it. That's why the prophet said that angels love it whenever you read. They just, they just love the word of God. They love to hear what God has to say in there. They don't have Bibles out there. Okay? That's, we have them. We need them. It's our instruction for getting, you know, passing through this world. So my voice is starting to crack up, and I think I've spoken enough. And, uh, yeah, so, guys, just make sure that you begin to develop a relationship with the Lord, a very intense one. So that you will be delivered from your mental illnesses, whether it's biological or demonic, you will be delivered from it. Not because I say so, but because I know what I'm talking about. Be I know what I'm talking about because of what Jesus says in the Bible. As a man thinketh, so is he. You can either think yourself into insanity, you can or think yourself into complete wholeness. Say this over yourself every day, Lord Jesus. As your body is, as your mind is, so am I. You say that every single day. And then the moment in time will come when you will find yourself completely delivered from demonic oppression and also from having to take anxiety, um, depression, depression pills. You will be delivered from psychiatric conditions, biological psychiatric conditions. You'll be delivered from that. Or, and psychiatric conditions psychological conditions that deal with stress brought on by whatever situation, relationships, finances, death. Okay? So, you know, the, that, that's all I can do, guys. Well, it's not all I can do. What I mean is I cannot force you guys, I cannot force you guys to take on, the to, to, to do what the Lord Jesus tells us to do for our better bent. Is that a word? For you know for for our good. I can't force you. That's a choice. The Lord just gives us choices, right? He says choose life. Choose life. Believe in him. He is life, guys. He is life. In the Bible he, he tells us that he is our life. Every single morning I have been reciting Lord Jesus I will never get mentally sick. I will never get physically sick because you live in me. And if you're living in me, there's, there's no room for illnesses. Is that not the truth? The Lord Jesus is a holy God. And if he's living in you, well, then that means there's no room for illnesses. And for you guys who are dealing with illnesses, stop thinking that you will never get well. Whatever we think manifests in our bodies and in our minds. The Lord Jesus Christ is living in you, and now you know what you need to do in order to deliver, get yourself delivered from these things. Do it. There's no time like the present to start making changes in your life. I hope I have not forgotten anything else because, guys, I'm very tired. My voice is cracking up, and um, I've got to go. And, guys, I have not eaten my breakfast yet. What time is it? I can't tell. There's a clock over there, but I can't see it. It's too far away. So guys, I'm going to go now. And uh, thanks for listening. And remember, just praise your, pr praise, uh, I was, was going to say praise yourself to health. Praise, praise your, praise God. Praise your way to health. Praise your way to health. I'm living proof of it, guys. I'm living proof of it. I am living proof that a person can think themselves into health. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. I believe whatever the Lord Jesus says about me, not what other people say about me. I only believe what the Lord Jesus says in the Bible about me. That's why life is going good for me. I got a little bit confused. Did I say that right? That's why life is going good for me. I thought I said... That's why going is life is good for me. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, I'm very tired.